now joining me in the studio this evening are the sports commentators Manuel Veth and Thomas Freens. Gentlemen, welcome to the Global Sports Report. Um, let's turn to Arsenal. Shock defeat at home to Swansea. Um, a goal against the run of play, uh, Thomas. Um, no one really saw that coming, did they? Arsenal in fantastic form. That's their first defeat in 11 games. Well, sometimes a defeat like that happens. And especially now that we know that the four, four first places are settled, maybe they've backed off a little bit on, on the game. And, well, they still tried. There was 21 shots for Arsenal, but they didn't manage to score. Maybe Thierry Henry is right, and they do need an, a world-class striker. Mm, that's an interesting comment. Uh, Manuel, um, where does that leave the race uh, for second place? Because Arsenal now trail Man City uh, by three points, but they do have a game in hand. Um, yet City also have a much greater goal difference. Does that defeat mean it's advantage City? It looks like it's done. And, you know, to be honest, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because second or third, you go, you, you avoid that, um, really, the playoff that mm. you really want to avoid, the, the, almost a gamble. Because if you get a tough opposition in the playoffs, you might not even play Champions League at all. So I think for Arsenal, uh, as Thomas rightly said, it really, you know, locked down the second or third place and the difference isn't, doesn't really matter. And, and, and if Arsenal do indeed finish second or third and win the FA Cup, would you say that's a good season for Arsene Wenger? Will Arsenal fans be happy with that? Well, it looks like Arsenal fans are never happy, right? <laughs> but honestly, uh, winning the FA Cup again will be fantastic and finishing second or third with the possibility of next in the next season doing better because I can see this team with players such as Bellerin for example that has mm. played his first season in the senior he's a great player so they can improve on that and maybe win the title next season. Who knows? Yeah, perhaps more to come from Arsenal next season. Let's turn to La Liga where it looks like Wednesday is going to be D-Day, uh, Manuel, regarding the future of this season at least. A court is going to decide if the planned strike is illegal. Um, this would be a disaster for Spanish football if there is a strike and we don't actually see the whole season played out. The consequences actually could be really big because if FIFA or UEFA get even a slight little hunch that... Um, the government is interfering in the matters of football. Mm. Um, you could even look at Spanish football being suspended from UEFA and FIFA international bodies. Do I think that will actually happen? Not likely, but the consequences that the money that will go down the drain, it's, it's, that, is, that is huge and I think um, it's, it looks like it's going to be dragged out for quite a long time as well. Um, Thomas, do you think this is actually, this strike is more of a is this about a power struggle over who really controls Spanish football? It is a bit of a uh, power struggle. Uh, we have to remember this is not the first time that uh, Spanish football goes into strike. Well, almost goes into strike. Because it's the only league in Europe that has two teams that control mm. more than 70% of the... I could be wrong in the numbers, but mm. they control the majority of the money. Mm -hmm. So you have other clubs. I'm not even talking about small clubs like Eibar, but you have clubs like Valencia, Atletico de Madrid. Mm -hmm. They don't receive enough money, and mm. that makes the league being very polarized in Barcelona and Real Madrid winning the titles, and once in a while, another club wins. So, so, so Manuel, do you agree with the rule that the Spanish government have tried to implement, or, or they've passed... Uh, and they've made it law in terms of making f Spanish football much more evenly distributed regarding income. I actually don't even think that is uh, that the rule is tough enough um, because when you look at the way the government is um, splitting the pie, the Real Madrid and Barcelona still would receive, I think, close to 60% of the money. And that is still not really fair. And it's not even that the La Liga clubs are really suffering from it. It's the smaller teams, the, the players from smaller clubs um, in the second and third division and you know these these guys they don't have um they don't make enough money and clubs cannot pay their players so i think it, this measure is not doesn't even go far enough in my opinion okay well obviously we'll have to wait and see if wednesday does indeed mm -hmm. uh, bring a halt to spanish football um let's turn to the big champions league game bayern versus barcelona uh, tomorrow night bayern trailing three nil after the first leg um they scored six against porto thomas um do you give pep's team any chance against this red-hot Barcelona team? Well, it's football, isn't it? Anything could happen. But it all depends on the first 25 minutes, as Guardiola said. It could happen. But I see it very hard to, to make Messi, Suarez and Neymar not scoring. Um, 
Thomas, uh, Manuel, you're from Munich. I know you're not a huge Bayern fan, but uh, how do you see this game playing out? Obviously, uh, Bayern still have huge injury problems. No mm. Robin, no Ribery. Yeah. Do they have the firepower? to score at least three goals against this Barcelona team? I think they have the firepower to score three goals, but to keep the defense tight and doing it, to get the result, 3-0 will be the result that they will go for. Um, go on extra time, try to get into penalties, but it's going to be really tough. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, as Thomas said, the first 25 minutes will be crucial. And Guardiola said, well, we can't play like we play in Germany, you know, the back and forth, back and forth, really kind of fast paced game. We can't do it here. So they will try to hold the game back, but at the same time to get a couple of goals right away. And, and how do you explain Bayern's incredible loss of form? Ever since they sealed mm. the German title, I think they've lost four games in a row, haven't scored a goal. Yeah. Um, this is very rare for any Bayern team, isn't it? It is very rare for any Bayern team. Even for, I mean, even when the club does not win titles, that kind of run is very rare. Um, on top of that, they actually, it's been since the winter break because they lost 4-1 to Wolfsburg. And even that was a result that shocked a lot of people. And when you actually take, everyone says that the, the Bundesliga um, Bayern just beats everyone. But when you look at the results that they got against the top four teams, out of 24 points, they only got nine points out of the top four teams in the Bundesliga. So they've been struggling all year, in a sense. OK, just quickly, your predictions, uh, Thomas. And also, how do you see Barca playing? <laughs> well, hopefully they will be able to play. Uh, maybe yeah. Bayern will uh, make them lose. Well, I think a 3-1 would be a good result for Bayern Munich. So Although they would not qualify, they, were, they are going to win tomorrow. OK, so Bayern to win, but ultimately Barca to go through. Yeah. Manuel, your prediction? 3-0. 3-0 three nil. <laughs> three nil for? Bayern. And then extra time? No. Yep. And then penalties, and then Bayern goes through. A very, very <laughs> optimistic Manuel who thinks Bayern will somehow uh, pull out a miracle at the Allianz Arena. Who knows? I might be wrong. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, pleasure. We've got plenty more of you later in the show. Gentlemen, I know you're not huge fans of cricket, so we won't talk too long about this, but uh, we really do need to talk about Kevin, don't we, Thomas? Um, Peterson smacks 326 for Surrey. Um, he was, of course, sacked by England in 2014. Um, we know there's no love lost between Andrew Strauss, the new director of England cricket, and uh, Mr Kevin Peterson. Has he now made an irresistible case to be reselected for England? Well, it's the matter of choosing the the individual over the team. Do you want to have a team that maybe has less quality but has a stronger bond together? Or do you want to have a team of individualities? If England thinks that they can do better off with him and they have a good team, a good team spirit together, maybe it's interesting to leave him out. OK, there are rumours, strong rumours, that despite his 326, that he will still be ignored. Um, Manuel, where do you stand on the broader issue of individual talent as we have here with Kevin Peterson over team ethic which one is is more important for success team ethic absolutely team ethic um, I mean the, the most recent example was Germany winning the World Cup and that team that was that was a team and then that was throughout that entire tournament was something that was brought up over and over again team over individual players and I think if you're in a team game then you then that's it it's the best team that wins not the best individuals and let's quickly talk about uh, Red Bull uh, and Formula One their threat to pull out of Formula One um, because they feel that they're not competitive enough or they want Audi uh, to come in Red Bull haven't been happy have they over the last two years and yet they had amazing success for four or five years many will say that you know, this is not the right way to go about sport, threatening to pull out simply because they're not successful anymore. Well, it's a way of making pressure on maybe change of regulations because the fact is, since Red Bull has started, they have had wonderful years and now they've become uh, a normal team. Mm. And that may be something that they need to think about. Maybe it's Renault, maybe it's just a fact. That OK, we'll have to leave you there. Thomas Manuel, pleasure having you here on the Global Sports Report.